Why is the Fry test important in forensic psychology? In 1921, James Fry confessed to murdering a doctor in the year 1920. However, shortly after confessing, Fry retracted his confession. Now, despite Fry retracting his confession, the prosecution proceeded with the case against him, taking it all the way to trial. And they contended that Fry was now simply just trying to deny his guilt. So in preparing to defend Fry, his lawyers sought the consultation of William Marston, who had degrees in both psychology and law, and he had also studied and worked at Hugo Munstenberg's Harvard laboratory. Now, Marston had developed a tool to investigate deception, and this was done by measuring the systolic blood pressure of a person when they were being subject to questioning. So essentially, when telling a lie, the emotional response caused a rise in the person's blood pressure, and this revealed whether the person was in fact telling the truth. Well, this was at least according to Marston. Now, although the principle was not entirely the same, Marston's work essentially established the principles of what would later become known as the polygraph test. And if Marston's lie detection work wasn't enough, he was also the pioneer of the Wonder Woman comic books and character. So after being called upon to provide consultation, Marston travelled to visit Fry in prison and he sought to test his confession against his truth-telling blood pressure machine. Now, based on Marston's test, he believed that Fry was in fact telling the truth and that he had falsely confessed to the crime of killing the doctor. Now, Fry's lawyers attempted to present Marston's evidence in court and they carefully proposed the findings in front of the jury only to have this struck out by the judge. So Marston's findings, according to the judge, were not considered as sufficient evidence and science to be included in the trial. And Fry was ultimately convicted of second degree murder. However, there is a belief that the attempt at introducing this evidence was actually significant enough to have Fry's finding reduced to second degree murder in, in lieu of a verdict relating to the death penalty. However, following the verdict, Fry's lawyers appealed to the US District Court of Appeals. However, the ruling was upheld and Marston's systolic blood pressure test was considered beyond a reliable and proven science. So in upholding the ruling, the judge remarked that somewhere in this twilight zone between experimental and demonstrable stages of discovery, the evidential force of the principle must be recognized. And while courts will go a long way in admitting expert testimony deduced from well-recognized scientific principles or discovery, the thing from which the deduction is made must be sufficiently established to have gained general acceptance in the particular field which it belongs. So this ruling became known as the Fry test, whereby expert testimony and scientific principles must be considered to be generally accepted and regarded as science within a particular field to be admissible to the court and accepted within the court as evidence. Mm -hmm.